This video is about creating a play posit uh, bulb from within the blend or the, the canvas course navigation. This course navigation is going to be uh, visible to the teachers. It will say play posit builder and using this will allow us to go straight to play posit using our district authentication. It will not automatically connect the bulb to a course. We're going to use this just to create a bulb. That bulb will then later be attached to a course or to students. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the play posit builder here in the course navigation. It's going to tell me to go ahead and open up a new tab. It's going to show you your my bulbs. This is the new <clears throat> version 3 of play posit. And it shows me that I have some bulbs that I've already made, but I'm going to go ahead and click on Add New Bulb. So the first thing I'm going to get to do here is select. Am I going to choose a video that I already have there or give it a link to an online video, upload a file, or upload an audio file even? But what I have done is I went out to YouTube. I found this fantastic video on the water cycle. I've used it every year. So now I'm going to use it with my students. So I copied the URL. I'm going to say input the URL. And this is the video that I have. Now I know in Austin ISD that if I want to use this YouTube video, I have to make sure that it's approved. If it's not restricted, I'm good to go. If it's restricted for the students, I want to go to the, uh, call the help desk and ask them to go ahead and approve that YouTube video. So here's my video. Uh, I can preview it right here. Yay, that's my video. All right, I can give it a new name or I can customize it right here. And the customization really, if there are some captions out there, I want to look for the English captions. Uh, what I was finding is this one does not have the captions available for me to use. If it did, I could add those captions to this. Um, I could also sit here and using the advanced tool, say where do I want this video to start? This is a six minute video. Maybe I just want 30 seconds of it for a small uh, centers rotation type thing. Uh, for this example, I'm going to leave the whole video there. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go ahead and click done. At this point, this is my video. Um, I'm going to be able to watch this video here. And when I am ready to add an interaction, I'm going to create an interaction, something that my students will do uh, at a certain time with this video. So I'm going to start playing right now. Oh, you know what I want my students to do. Right here before we ever get started, I want my students to do some previewing thought stuff, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click Add an Interaction at this O2, this very beginning place here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit a pause. So in this pause, I want to go ahead and tell them, look at the top of the bulb. They'll see an icon that has a notes icon on it. And I want them to write a definition from memory in this little notepad. It's not a graded thing. It's just a note collection place where they can use throughout the video. So I want my students to be able to use this as they see uh, content coming through on the videos. Now I can say advanced. I want this to be required. And I want the video to pause. So this interaction is going to pause the video. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click done on this. Now I'm going to continue playing and look for my next question spot. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. I've previewed the video and I know at many, uh, tw or 26 seconds I want to add a question. And I'm going to start off easy. I want to give them a multiple guess question. How old is the fresh water on earth? And for one answer choice I'm going to give them uh, 29 days and another one thousands of years. And I'm going to add one more answer option, millions of years. Now you'll see that this bar keeps popping up here. So this is another rich content editor where I could put an equation or even add a picture. I could, for my non-readers, I could make an audio. Uh, we'll look at that in a minute. But now I have my three choices. My advanced options again. I'm going to make them do this question. I'm going to pause the video while they do this. Um, and at this point, maybe I want them to be able to rewind. Maybe they missed it, so I'm going to let them rewind after they see this interaction. Um, 
and eh, maybe I'll give them more than one attempt. How many attempts? I'll give them three attempts on this one. Okay, so now which of these is the correct answer? Millions of years is the correct answer. I could select it there or through the uh, gear setting there I could say mark that one correct. You'll see for each of them I can add feedback or we'll look at jumping here in just a second. Um, so if I want to give them feedback and say feedback on 29 days please rewind and look for this answer again. So I've given some feedback for the wrong answers. I've, I've customized it. I'm going to click done. So there's my next question at 26 seconds. Now I'm not going to sit there and listen to the more of I know that around a minute 28 so I'm going to grab the playhead and scoot it way over for a minute 28 for my next question. So right about here at a minute 29 I want to ask a question and for this one I'm going to use a check all interaction and in this interaction I want it to say what two words best summarize the water cycle. So now I have five choices. This is a check all correct. So only two of these are correct. In the previous uh, part of that video it says that they are flows and stores. Best summarize that. Okay. Again I'm going to go down. I want this to be required. I want it to pause. I want them to be able to rewind. And I'm going to check randomize the order so that this would be different for um, uh, each user when they're going through this. I'm going to allow them one more attempt and I'm going to go ahead and click done. So now I've used fewer of the advanced settings but they're going to get to this and they're going to have to choose this. Uh, choose the right answers. I want to do a different type of interaction coming up here and in about 2 minutes and 15 I'm going to add my actual question. For this one I want them to give me a free response and so for this free response, I want them to tell me at least three examples of places that water can be stored. A different type of interaction can be the discussion. So about three minutes ten, they just got through seeing some information about water runoff. So I want to add an interaction here called the discussion. And in this discussion, I'm going to have them uh, provide some input and this is where the students will be able to see each other's answers. And so for this one it's going to say where does water store in your neighborhood? I want each of the students to pause here for a second and I want them to think about the water runoff and the elevation of their uh, the land around their homes but I want this to uh, pause and I want to give them a chance to sit there and discuss. On this one what they would see is a window that pops open and they would sit there and type their answer and at that time that they input their answer it will time code it so that their answers will be seen by the others at the time of the video where they left their message. So at this point we've been talking about aquifers or the video has been talking about aquifers and I want the students to uh, give me an, a specific answer so we're going to do a fill in the blank. So I want them to tell me the name of the aquifer that is under most of Austin. And so I'm going to type that sentence and then I have a space where I want to leave for an input. And then I'm going to type the rest of the sentence. Now I'm going to come down to my answer space here. What is the correct answer? The Edwards Aquifer. Or perhaps the Edwards Aquifer. Or knowing my student the Edwards Aquifer. So any of these would be able to be selected as a correct answer for this fill in the blank. Now if I look, if I had more fill in the blanks I could say add another input answer. I'm going to say advanced here and if they don't get it correct this time I do want them to back up and see the right answer. So I'm going to slide back the time. This percolates into the ground. Think of and right about here he says the right answer so that I have said if they, if they get the cor incorrect answer it will jump back to what he's about to say here at 409 and I'm gonna click done on that now I'm gonna skip all the way down to the end at 630 and at 630 I want to do some end of the video questioning So I'm adding a question here at the end what is the process of turning from liquid into vapor called and I have three choices here 
So, uh, since this is the end of the video, I want to make sure that my students are very comfortable with what those words are. So I'm going to leave an audio, record this audio. What is the process of turning from liquid into vapor called? And I will stop that. I can play that. Audio. What is the process of turning from liquid into vapor called? All right, I like it. So I'm going to upload it. So now my students will have audio that will read that to me. So the correct answer is for evaporation. So I'm going to go ahead and go to where we were talking about evaporation at 4 minutes 50 seconds. If they get the incorrect answer, if they choose condensation, it's going to ask them to go back and review that section again. I'm going to do the same thing for the other wrong answer. So now both of my answers that are incorrect will jump them back to the content that I want them to see. This answer will give them the right answer. So I've completed this question. I want a question right after this one. So I'm going to go up to the three dots, the little kebab. Oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it some points. This is worth five points. And then I want to go ahead and add an interaction right after this one. Again, it's going to be another multiple guess. I now have the correct answer marked and I have some jump backs for redirection. You'll see now that this question at 6 minutes 30 seconds has uh, two questions attached to it. So if I go ahead and add one more right after that and say add an inter interaction after, you'll see that it is also connected and I will repeat the process for the last question. At this point I have finished creating my bulb. I have uh, along my timeline at the bottom all of these are different interactions that I have added. My students will be able to go in there uh, watch the video. It will stop on those interactions. It will record how long that they've seen a, uh, a, an interaction. Did they stop? How long did they take to answer the question? They're right and they're wrong answers, etc. Now that I'm done, I want to go up to the very top and there's a little review button that I can almost see. Once I click review, it shows me the name of it. I can type my learning objective here. Playback options. So I can choose here. Do I allow the learners to rewind this, skip the interactions, allow them to fast forward? In my classroom, I don't want them to skip the interactions. If they've come back to this and I'm bringing it up as a review, maybe I might start selecting some of those. For my purposes in a later video, I do want to be able to fast forward uh, to, to make making this video a little bit easier. So I'm going to say uh, that I can fast forward. And I do want to be able to retake it upon completion. And now when I click on the privacy at the very bottom, this bulb by default is visible to members of my district. Um, I can say that it's private, that I don't want my community to be able to see it, uh, but that would kind of keep my students from seeing it as well. Uh, and this bulb is public. I do want to share this uh, with people so that they can find it. So I'm just going to leave it at the default. It's available or it's visible to the members of my district, my students. And now I'm going to save the changes. My bulb has successfully been updated. I'm going to save and I'm going to exit. Upon exiting, I will see that now my water cycle bulb is available. I've tagged it. So now what I'm going to end up doing is going back into Blend, and then I want to attach this to an assignment or to a page for my students to be able to interact with it.